Hi, so for today we're going to talk about steel mesh analysis. This is a part two video of our network theorem video lecture in DC circuits. And for today's video, we're going to solve this problem, okay? Wherein we have again two mesh equations, all right? Two meshes here. And then uh, we're going to solve for the mesh current I sub 1 and the mesh current I sub 2 in the given circuit. So again, uh, first, we need to write the correct mesh equation, okay? So let's start with mesh equation 1 or mesh 1. So let's start with the voltage source. As you can see, our I sub 1 is in clockwise direction. So we will be having, it enters the negative side of the voltage source. So it's negative 36. And that is will be added to the summation of the resistors, okay, that is included in the mesh I sub 1. So we have 2, we have 2 ohms here, plus we have 12 ohms here, plus we have 4 ohms here. Those resistors are included in the mesh I sub 1. So it should be multiplied by I sub 1. And as you can see here, the 12 ohms here, okay, is, uh, includes both in the mesh 1 and mesh I sub 2, so that would be negative 12, okay, times the I sub 2, okay? And that is equivalent to 0, okay? So, let's simplify. We have negative 36 plus 12 plus 2 is 14 plus 4, that's 18 I sub 1 minus 12 I sub 2 is equals to 0. And, okay, if we're going to... Uh, Okay, so rearranging this, 18 I sub 1 minus 12 I sub 2 is equals to 36. Uh, we can simplify this because these are all divisible by 6. So if we divide this all by 6, this should be 3 I sub 1 minus 2 I sub 2 is equals to 6. So that would be our first equation for our mesh 1. Again, a recap of what we did. We write the mesh equation uh, properly by with its signs and of course with its uh, resistors included in the mesh one and of course that is subtracted by whatever resistor is included uh, both for i1 and i2 and in this case uh, that's uh, i sub 2 okay so for our mesh 2 okay for our mesh equation 2 so we start again with this voltage source. So if we have a clockwise direction, it enters the positive terminal 24 volts. And of course, that is added to all the resistors included in the mesh I sub 2. That is 9 plus 3 plus 12, and that's I sub 2. Notice that it should be plus because we are now in our mesh analysis, mesh analysis I sub 2. And that is minus, okay, because this 12 is included also in the I sub 1. So that is minus 12 I sub 1 is equals to 0. So we have 24 plus, uh, 9 plus 3 is 12, plus 12 is 24 I sub 2. Okay, minus 12 I sub 1 is equals to 0. If we are going to write this, okay, uh, in I sub 1, I sub 2 in the constants, so we have negative 12 I sub 1 plus 24 I sub 2 plus 24 is equals to 0. And of course, if we divide this both by uh, 12, okay, these are all divisible by 12. So we have negative I sub 1 plus 2 I sub 2 plus 2 is equals to 0. Or in other words, we have negative I sub 1 plus 2 I sub 2 okay, is equals to negative 2. And that is our second equation. And as I have said, we can rewrite this again. So 3i sub 1 minus 2i sub 2 is equal to 6. We have negative i sub 1 plus 2i sub 2 is equal to negative 2. Okay, we can simply eliminate i sub 2 by adding them. Okay, so if we add them, this would be 2i sub 1 is equal to 6 minus or plus negative 2, that's 4. Our I sub 1 is simply 4 over 2, and that is 2 amperes. 
and we can substitute i sub 1 on any of the equation let's say for equation 2 so substitute uh, i sub 1 is equal to 2 amperes to equation 2 so let's see what we will get so we have negative times i sub 1 that's 2 okay plus 2 i sub 2 is equal to negative 2 so negative 2 okay plus 2 i sub 2 is equal to negative 2 and what will happen here we have 2 i sub 2 negative 2 transpose this this would be positive 2 so 2 i sub 2 is equal to 0 and i sub 2 is equals to 0 over 2 and that is 0 amperes okay so that is the mesh currents i sub 1 and i sub 2 so again let's try to solve this okay let's try to solve this in matrix form okay in kramer's rule okay so we have 3 i sub 1 minus 2 i sub 2 is equal to 6 we have negative i sub 1 plus 2 i sub 2 is equal to negative 2 again putting that into matrix form let me just write it here so we have the coefficients this is negative let me just rewrite that so this is negative so we have 3 as a coefficient and then we have negative 1 for negative i sub 1 we have negative 2 and we have 2 and that is equal or multiplied by the mesh currents i sub 1 and i sub 2 and that is equivalent to the constant okay 6 and negative 2 okay so what we did is to get the determinant of this coefficient so we have 3 negative 1 negative 2 times 2 so that should be 3 times 2 okay 3 times 2 minus this one negative 1 and negative 2 so we have 6 minus okay negative 1 times negative 2 is 2 so that is basically 4 and of course to get delta sub 1 is we're going to replace the first column of our coefficient matrix by the constant so we have 6 negative 2 and we have negative 2 and 2 so get the determinant 6 times 2 okay and then minus negative 2 times negative 2 so that is 12 minus basically negative 2 is negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 is 4 okay so we have 12 minus 4 and that is 8 and in order for us to get i sub 1 again our formula is i sub 1 over uh, is equals to delta sub 1 over the delta our delta sub 1 is 8 our delta is 4 so 8 divided by 4 and that is equivalent to 2 amperes so how about again delta sub 2 so for delta sub 2 we're going to replace the second column by the constants and copy the first column so we have 3 negative 1 then we have 6 negative 2 get the determinant so 3 times negative 2 that's negative 6 minus the uh, summation of products of this another diagonal so we have negative 1 times 6 so what happens here is we have negative 6 negative 1 times 6 is uh, negative 6 so what will happen is negative 6 plus 6 that is 0 and of course to get i sub 2 we have the formula delta sub 2 over delta so our delta sub 2 is 0 and that is divided by 4 which our delta and that's that result to a zero ampere so hence whatever method we are going to use still you still get the same answer you can also use elimination okay or substitution i mean substitution uh, elimination kramer rule. but i suggest again just like what i've said on the previous video that you use kramer's rule why because in circuits 2 in analyzing alternating current circuits you will be dealing with complex numbers okay and if you are just relying on your calculator to solve for i1 i2 or i3 in these circuits then definitely you will be having a hard time okay in uh getting the currents in ac in our in your circuits too because you would not be able to uh enter it directly to your calculator that calculator technique wherein we can solve simultaneous equations so at least we should know how to solve uh, this equation okay this equation uh, using the kramer's rule i suggest i highly suggest that you use matrix okay so just don't forget to uh 
uh, to practice your skills in mathematics okay so and that's it that's it for this video and i would like to leave you an assignment all right or uh, an exercise of this circuit okay so you try that circuit you try this circuit you have uh, a 45 volts here okay and you have uh, same set of resistors So same set of resistor, this is 4 ohms, this, uh, I mean, this is 2 ohms, this is 2 ohms, this is 4 ohms, and this is 12 ohms, and we have another set of resistor here, another set of voltage source here, okay, and we have another resistor here, so this is 30 volts, okay, and this is 9 ohms, okay. And we have 3 ohms. Okay. Calculate the mesh currents. Okay. I sub 1. And of course, we have I sub 2. The answers are, for your reference, your answer in I sub 1 should be 2.5 amperes. And I sub 2 is again 0 amperes. Okay. And that's it, guys. I hope you learned something about the mesh analysis again for our two meshes and for the next video we will be dealing with three mesh equations and try to solve the mesh equations i sub one i sub two and i sub three so thank you so much for listening again this is engineer abad thank you so much for listening i hope you learned something and see you again on the next video